Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite game engines that I don't get to talk about as much as I'd like, and that is the default game engine. Now the reason for this is, generally when I talk about a game engine, is because there was a new release. But the thing is, default does constant sprints, so they do new releases every couple of weeks, which on this channel makes it very hard to cover. But today we're going to be talking about it because there is an excellent UI framework for default called Druid, and we will get to that in just a second. But first, a quick overview of default itself. So this is a cross-platform, in other words, the tooling runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It is source available. It's basically open source. It just doesn't use an OSI compliant license, but you have most of all the same benefits of being open source. Uh, it is production ready. There are shipped games being created with it, and it is completely free. And what actually is probably most impressive about that is it's completely free, and you can publish for major consoles, the Switch, PlayStation 5, and so on, as you can see from the list of them all right here, uh, with Xbox theoretically coming any day now. I'm not sure if that's happened yet or not. Maybe I get to make a video about it that when that happens. So it is a full editing environment, just an excellent tool. We're going to bop out of here for a second. If you want to check it out, it is at defold.com. Here we are. This is the default game engine. One thing you will notice right away, it is exceptionally clean. It's got a very beautiful UI, in my humble opinion. Uh, in terms of how things work, this is a Lua-based game engine. Your, your scene is made out of a very simple concept. It's basically everything is a collection. So your level here is a collection. Your player inside of that is a collection. So see down here, we'll go down and find player, player right here, the player is made up of a collection. The collection in turn is, um, so you got a tile source for the sprites, I think they are that open. There you see all your animations are built in. You can have previews of these various different animations over here. Uh, it has pretty much all the tooling you need to make a, a game right away. Uh, then we'll notice over here, this is the script, for example, for controlling the camera. And what you will notice is it is Lua based. On top of that, it is also messaging based. So you do a lot of things by sending and receiving messages, like here, post this message uh, to yourself to acquire camera focus, as an example. It takes a little bit to get used to exactly how things are programmed inside of the default game engine, but once you start to understand it, it can fit like a glove. It is a very cool engine. I highly recommend that you check out if you haven't already. But that's not technically why we're talking about it today, although giving the opportunity to talk about Default and expose it to more people, I will always do so. But what we're looking at today instead is Druid. So we're in the sample for Druid. Let's go ahead and run this quickly, and you'll get an idea of what Druid is all about. It is a UI framework. So if you want to create a more complicated UI, you want to create tooling, uh, you want to create applications using Default, that is what this basically opens up for you. You're going to notice it implements a lot of things, things like buttons or uh, hold buttons, multi-line text, formatted text, rich text, uh, dragging and dropping, sliders, vertical sliders, progress bars. I don't think I can control it. Oh, I control it over here. Property binding like so. Uh, progress bar, nine sliced blockers, um, back button handling, uh, timer handling, scrolling, uh, gridded controls in a scroll grid, grid horizontal, password input, masked, normal input. Uh, then we got down here, uh, rich text fields, so you can mark things up using rich text. Uh, you can see multi-line rich text with tags, uh, and so on. You got checkbox, checkbox groups, data lists, you name it. You even got an on-screen controller set up right here and a gamepad tester. So if you need to make a UI using the default game engine, that is what Druid is all about. Notice the name here. I didn't notice this at first, to be honest. D R U I. D. So this is a UI framework for uh, the default game engine. Uh, in terms of the programming, it's again, so here you can see this is a very complicated example, but it is uh, all Lua based uh, when you actually have a control. So let's go look at a simple uh, control over here. So intro, basic, uh, checkbox. All right, so here we go. We'll open up the checkbox GUI. GUI, you see, it's pretty simple. It is an object that is a checkbox. That's about it. I'll go over here and see the coding logic for it. And you're gonna see, uh, you can create it like so. There's, you can bind it to your control called checkbox. You initialize it. So you're setting up the Druid library itself, uh, the button, the icon, and so on. And then handling the checkbox, you're doing just callbacks. So this should be very familiar to you. So uh, on checkbox clicked, clicked, this code will be called uh, when the setting the state of the, so the checked versus not checked, functionality there and a function here to get the actual state. So that is how you would set up a checkbox as an example. Let's go check out a button instead. Here is a basic button. There, a very basic button you can see there. And here is the code for controlling it. 
So again, create your button, initialize it. So uh, here and then go. So now, interestingly, uh, so they're they're doing it a callback. So they're uh, designing this function here that will be the on button pressed function. You could have also done it the other way. Uh, so let's see if this one does it the other way. So you see, you can see, uh, no, it does here. So self but on hold callback subscribe. And there is the code that will be called when that button is clicked. So this is a full framework for creating complex GUIs inside of the Fold uh, game engine. Druid is a very impressive framework and why I decided to feature it today. Now, if you want to learn more about it, it's actually available. So again, Default is available at default.com, completely free, cross-platform, excellent game engine. Highly recommend you go and check it out. Uh, the Druid library itself is available up on GitHub. It is under the MIT source code license, which gives you a lot of flexibility how you can go about using it. But more impressively, it is incredibly well documented. So uh, powerful uh, component UI framework empowers developers to create stunning and customizable GUIs by leveraging a wide range of embedded components or effortlessly designing their own game specific components. There is a full example here with uh, HTML. We'll come back to that in just a second. Some details on how to get it up and going. Here is the uh, the basic usage of it. So again, you have to use your Druid library in there. Uh, here you can see a callback being generated, initialization right here, where it's creating Druid, creating a button, and applying the callback to said button. Should be very familiar if you've ever done any GUI programming. If you haven't done Lua before, it can take a little bit to get used to it. On top of that, uh, it is all very well documented. So you see, Everything in it is documented, which is quite nice. And then, of course, we have all of the the um, examples that are available here. You can see pretty much all the controls that are available. So you got buttons, text, scrolling, blockers, back handling, grids, and so on, all uh, with examples available for them. And like I promised earlier on, we're going to head on over to the HTML5 version of the examples. So if you want to check out what it is capable of, you come in here again. This is the same app we ran uh, earlier on. Uh, by the way, if you want to run it yourself, just basically clone that repository, open the project file, and it's there as well. So if you want to do multi-line text here as an example, at any particular time, if you want to come in here, click there, and you can see the code behind that example. So there's examples for basically everything Druid does. Uh, you've got some documentation here on customizing it, creating your own layers, and so on. Uh, and it is um, it's pretty current. It's a very uh, freshly released. So the 1.0 release happened just last week. Uh, that's why I'm covering it today. But it has been ongoing for a very long time. So there's been tons and tons of releases. This thing, when's the first release? Let's go over here. And we'll see when this thing actually started being released. It's been under development for quite a while. So the original release was 2020. Uh, and then just last week, they had the first 1.0 release, which is why I am focusing on it again today, but also because I like an opportunity to, defug, to plug the default game engine as well. So ladies and gentlemen, the default game engine, if you've never checked it out, go do so. If you can stomach using Lua, which I actually rather enjoy using, uh, it is a wonderful game engine for making 2D games. It's got 3D support as well, but it's primarily a 2D, 2.5D style game engine. Uh, and then if you're looking to do UIs inside of it, I highly recommend going to check out out Druid, an excellent UI component framework for the default game engine. Both excellent tools. Highly recommend them both. Hopefully, you'll give, give them a, you'll give them a chance, and I'll learn how to speak again. Uh, yeah. So that's it. Let me know what you think. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.